A floor buffer is a machine that is also sometimes referred to as a swing machine, a side-to-side -side machine, a bonnet cleaner, uh, a floor polisher, a floor machine. Uh, so it has a wide range of names, but essentially what it is is a, a machine that is operated with a single motor, uh, which typically and generally sits in the, um, in the middle of the pad driver uh, that holds the pad which touches the floor. So the whole machine rests on that pad. And it's, the way it works is it has a side-to-side -side motion or a swinging motion um, as, it, as it cleans the surface or touches the surface. And that's one of the reasons why it's called a swing machine or a side-to-side -side machine. So a floor buffer or a swing machine has a wide range uh, of uses and that's perhaps why it is one of the favorite tools in a professional cleaner's arsenal of tools. Um, a, a floor machine or floor buffer can be used to clean carpets, it can be used to strip uh, coatings off of floors, it can be used just to scrub uh, uh, and polish floors, it can be used to grind floors if it's equipped with the right kind of motor, it can be used to clean baseboards. Um, and, and as a result has a wide range uh, of functions. Now, it's important to note that uh, not all floor machines are made equal. Uh, some machines have more versatility than others and that becomes an important consideration when you're looking for uh, a floor machine. Uh, and it's also important to note that um, it's usually not that you buy a floor machine and you can do all the things I just mentioned to you. Um, you, you do need specific tools to do the job right. So if you're cleaning carpets, for example, you would want a bonnet driver and bonnets, so you can actually do that job right. If you're cleaning uh, tile and grout, you probably want to get a, a brush and a pad which actually cleans um, uh, the tile and grout and the right kinds of chemicals to go with it. Um, if you are grinding a floor, you have to make sure that the machine that you're buying has the right kind of high torque motor that you need to do that kind of grinding. So, while it's very versatile, it also means you have to be conscious of the tools that you choose to do those jobs. A burnisher is a very specific type of machine with a very single purpose. Um, a, a, a burnisher runs at a speed of anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 RPM as compared to a, a floor buffer which might, might run between 150 and 300 RPM. So it runs much faster than, than a, a floor machine does. And the reason why it runs that fast is because that single purpose it has is to burnish or to polish floors and give it that high gloss kind of wet look. But that's the only thing it does. And it's a very different machine from a uh, floor buffer. There are perhaps hundreds of brands of uh, floor machines available, uh, but there are primarily three things that, that distinguish uh, uh, a floor buffer. First is the size of the, the head or the pad that it drives and that typically can run from 13 inches to 20 inches, with the 18 to 20 inch being perhaps the most common. The second is the type of motor that's on it. So not only do you have to look at the horsepower, because there are smaller machines that are geared more towards the residential market that might be a half horsepower motor, uh, or old carpet machines used to run at a, a half horsepower. Modern machines typically for commercial purposes run at about one and a half horsepower. But even those motors come in, in different um, gear ratios. So there, there are high torque motors and regular torque motors. And the high torque motors are the ones you need to do grinding because they're designed specifically to give you that kind of uh, uh, traction. And then uh, finally, I think it's the speed. So uh, floor buffers uh, either come as a single speed machine or a dual speed machine. So depending on what you're using it for, those are the three primary things you'd look at. Size, speed, and motor type. I think there are three or four things to think about as you, as you uh, try to make a decision about your floor buffer. Um, I think one is your outlook in terms of how long do you want to own this machine and what's the purpose. When you look at the outlook, um, there are people who need a machine for two years and there are other people who want to have it for a lifetime, right? The investment you make for a machine you expect to throw away after two years 
will be quite different from the investment you will make in a machine that you expect to last a lifetime. Um, so durability of the machine, the, the quality of the build, those, those are important factors to consider from your viewpoint of how long you want to own the machine. But perhaps more important than that is what do you want to use the machine for? And if, again, you have a very single purpose, you can find machines that are geared towards that single purpose. Or if you're looking for versatility, like many independent uh, cleaning contractors um, will, will want versatility because rather than own multiple machines, they want to make sure they have one machine that can do multiple things. And, and from that perspective, I think you need to ask yourself how versatile do you need the machine to be? Do you want to do carpet cleaning and uh, uh, stripping of wax and you want to clean baseboards? Well, then you might have one type of machine. But if your only purpose is to, to buff the floors with one type of pad, then maybe you don't need to spend money on a very expensive machine. I think the, the third, third criteria is um, uh, value, looking at the value of the machine. So many people look at price, and the price ranges can be quite wide. But a, a better view of how to buy a floor machine is looking at value. And by that, I mean the machines, there are some machines intrinsically that save you time when you're doing the, the work that you're doing. And we all know that the labor costs are a much more significant part of your overall cost than the cost of the machine. And so keeping that in mind, if you're able to save time on labor, and time in getting the work done, right, and you save yourself money because of the nature of the machine or what the machine offers you, it's a no-brainer to me that that becomes a critical factor in, in your assessment of, of the product. But there are also other elements of value. Uh, durability, as I mentioned earlier, becomes an element of value because you've got uh, the cost per year. So if something lasts you two years and costs you a thousand bucks, it's $500 a year. That same machine might cost you $2,000, but last you 10 years, it costs you $200 a year. A clear distinction. Uh, if your view is long, value becomes an important assessment. And then there's also value when it comes to downtime. So if the machine is going to keep running and give you the uptime, you're not wasting time of people who are at work sites trying to figure out what they're going to do because the machine broke down. So that's the, the second criteria is, is value. And then I think the final one would be the size. You, know, you have to understand what it is you're trying to do. Uh, do you need a small machine because everything you're doing has constraints around it? Or maybe you're working in, in bigger spaces and it doesn't matter. But size becomes important. The bigger the machine, the more efficient you are. Costs range wildly, but I'll perhaps put it into three different categories. Small, the kind of the basic machines might cost you anywhere from twelve hundred bucks to two thousand dollars. I think a premium machine would cost you anywhere from two thousand dollars to thirty-five hundred dollars. Um, and then you've got machines which are geared towards grinding, like the high torque machines. Those ones might run you from between anywhere from three thousand to five thousand dollars. So it really depends on on what what uh, game you're. Uh, aiming for.